Hi and welcome back to Sky. In today's video I'm going to take a look at how you can maximise the number of images you can get from a single location. From wide fast vistas to intimate details there are many many ways to shoot any landscape location and which you choose is what makes your photography unique. So while these are the images that I chose to shoot there are many others that you might have chosen and they, well, they could have been better than mine. But these are the four that I was most happy with from this location. So, here's how I shot them. Walking over the small bridge, over the burn, one composition just screamed out to me. The cascades of water flowing over the rocks to the right would make the perfect foreground, with the sea and mountains in the background. So, to get me started, I set up my tripod as close to the falls as possible. So close, in fact, that one leg of my tripod is in the water, and I'm perched right at the edge of the water. Now I'm using a 17mm lens and frame my shot so that the falls start in the left-hand corner and extend right across the image. The curve of the stream leads into the left of the frame, and I made sure that I included the arc of the stream to draw the eye back into the frame towards the mountains. And here's the result. I converted it to black and white because I felt that the tones, shapes and textures worked better than the colour version. Now it's a decent shot, but I can hear you say that that isn't one of the four shots that we were shown at the start of the video. Well, don't worry, we'll be coming back to this composition and the subject when the light takes a dramatic turn. And while standing on the side of the stream, checking the position of the sun, I notice the amazing light streaming through the trees to my left, creating a potentially more dramatic image than the one that I was taking. So I swap my lens for a 70 to 200 millimeter and walk just a few yards back up towards the road to gain some height because this will allow me to crop out as much sky as possible. And I choose a really simple composition with an amazing oak tree right in the centre and the other trees and foliage around it. Now shooting into the low sun means that even with the lens hood attached, I'm getting loads of flare. Now there's sometimes that this can be a useful creative effect, but I don't like the way that it looks in this image. So it's off with my trusty Tilly hat, and even though it's difficult to hold steady in the wind, I use it to shade the front of the lens, to eliminate the flare, and get the first of my shots of the day. Now this isn't a shot that I'd intended to take at all, but I think it's a great result. With the clouds rolling in, I decide to make my way back down to the stream and explore the many rocks dotted around the cascades as my next potential image. I leave the 70-200mm lens on as it's perfect for picking out individual rocks and water details. And after walking around and checking out several rocks and compositions, I settle on this brown speckled rock as I love the way that the water is cascading over the top of it, creating amazing shapes, patterns and textures in the water. Now I try a couple of tighter compositions, like this one, but I prefer this one, with much more space around the rock to capture the water cascading over the small rocks downstream. Now it's still over an hour before sunset. But almost as soon as I had got my rock detail shot, 
the clouds out to the southwest threaten some rain. So it's a good time to head back to my first location and revisit my original composition. From pretty much the same position, I set up ready for the cloud and light to create the dramatic backdrop that was lacking in my first attempt. But Mother Nature decides not to play ball. Instead of dramatic clouds, I get rain and the mountains disappear. So I cover up my camera and it's just a case of waiting it out and seeing what might happen when the rain stops. The rain soon blows through across the mountains and eventually the cloud starts to clear over the cooling. So with my fingers crossed, well not really as it makes it quite tricky to operate a camera, I hope that I might get better luck when the next band of rain and clouds roll in. And I do. The sky stays clear enough to have glimpses of the mountains and the sun lights up the rain clouds out on the horizon, creating a really dramatic backdrop. So with another shot in the bag, it's tempting to stay with this composition and see whether the conditions get even better. But instead, I decide to go for one more detail shot, but this time of the mountains themselves. Because I've noticed the waves of rain passing across the distant mountains, which could make a great image. So I change over to the telephoto lens again to isolate the distant peaks and hope that the weather gods will be on my side this time. And luckily they were. And just as a rain shower passed in front of the mountain, the sun lit up the rain and the land in the foreground to produce this amazing scene. So with sunset still around 30 minutes away, I decided to stick around in the hope for a colourful final image. But instead, the sun dropped behind a bank of cloud, like it often does. And instead of colour, the whole scene just got darker and greyer. But I wasn't really that disappointed as I came away with these four images. And that's the sort of success that makes the whole thing worthwhile. So that's how I shot four images at this location at Ord in Skye. Now I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have, please join me again and I'll be shooting on Sky or in the Highlands. So take care and I'll see you later.